500 child slaves being rescued in England in a single year. And it being said, quite rightly, that that is the tip of the iceberg. What is it with humans and children? Because the scale of paedophilia worldwide is absolutely staggering. And it affects every level of society. But in terms of ratio, it's very concentrated in the so-called elite levels of society. There are deep reasons for this, far out reasons, which I talk about in the books. But another is the need for psychopathic, actually psychopathetic people to have control and dominance over the innocent and defenseless. And this psychopathic human trait is what causes so many children to live lives of unspeakable horror. And the report this week into widespread child abuse in children's homes on the island of Jersey since the Second World War, involving hundreds and hundreds of children and then some, thank you, has taken the same, or revealed the same, structure that you find everywhere. Over and over again, wherever you look worldwide, and child abuse and paedophile and satanic rings are worldwide, um, you find the same structure and the same techniques and it's the same structure because it's holographic. It's global and it's holographic. And what I mean by holographic is every part is a mirror of the whole. So you have local paedophile rings and satanic rings, and then they lock into bigger rings and bigger rings and bigger rings until you've got a global ring involving both paedophilia and Satanism, because the two are fundamentally connected for reasons I explain in the books. So. If we look at this report from Jersey this week into the uh, massive abuse of children there um, on an island uh, of only 100,000 people, you can't know about child abuse on the scale that was going on on an island of 100,000 people. Of course you do. Of course the authorities did. And as the report points out, when the children got a chance to say this is what's going on, they were ignored. Of course they were ignored. That's why um, the paedophile and satanic rings can continue, because any exposure is pushed down. Um, and so, if we look at this report, we'll see the recurring, 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 um, and recurring themes. First of all, the abuse itself. Uh, described um, in the report in terms like cruel and degrading punishments. Uh, an oppressive and fearful environment. These are kids, for goodness sake humiliating and degrading treatment, homes managed in a strict and physically dominant way by psychopaths. Now, um, I'm not saying that all people that run or work at children's homes and care homes are psychopaths or paedophiles, of course not. But, little question, if you're a paedophile and you want access to children, you're not going to get a job at an old people's home, are you? 
And this needs to be recognised, that wherever children are gathered, particularly in any number, then paedophiles are, wanna, are wanting to get in there somehow. And of course, because these are rings, and not overwhelmingly just individuals, it means that these psychopaths and paedophiles get appointed to these positions over children because other members of the ring are in the positions of political and administrative power to give them those jobs. And then when something happens that uh, starts to expose it, well, you also have the political and administrative and judicial mechanism to suppress the truth coming out, especially in terms of the rich and famous. So the report said that um, some children were effectively abandoned in the care system, and much of it's not a care system, that's the problem. And uh, Haute de la Garenne, this is the one they're calling the House of Horrors um, in Jersey, a horrific place, um, had a toxic mix of personalities who treated children harshly. Now, when you have a paedophile um, centre like Hope de la Garenne, you, you're not going to put non-paedophiles in there in any number in terms of control, because those who are paedophiles will quickly get exposed. This is why when, when you're looking at these things, you don't just look at um, the people who ran the homes uh, who were paedophiles, look around those that allowed that to happen without being exposed, look at those that gave them the jobs and ignored um, uh, warnings of what was going on. Uh, because these are rings, not overwhelmingly, like I say, individuals. Now, um, the other thing, of course, is everyone watches everyone else's back when it's a ring. So people are protected. I mean, look at Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile, um, the so-called BBC entertainer, um, has been exposed as a record-breaking paedophile decade after decade after decade, interacting as he was all the time with the, the rich and famous and, and the inner circle of British royalty, bosom buddy of Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister, a prime minister of um, a government uh, at, a, at a time when uh, many, many allegations have been made about a Westminster paedophile ring, which wasn't just going on then. It's going on now for the same reason that this Jersey report said, um, despite all that's happened, uh, all that's been exposed, uh, children on Jersey are still in danger and vulnerable to the same basic forces that they are um, exposing. And um, Hope de la Garenne is a place where Jimmy Savile went. And also, um, Jersey um, was a um, regular venue for former Prime Minister Edward Heath, who I exposed in the late 1990s as a, a paedophile and a Satanist. Um, he's now under police investigation um, uh, years and years and years after his death. He was alive for seven more years after I named him. And he had every chance to respond, but didn't. Why? Because it was true. Um, and Savile um, got away with it because of that. And um, we um, come to the next in the list of always there in this Jersey report, and that is protecting the powerful, like Savile, like Heath. And if you look at the Westminster paedophile ring, which there have been a massive cover-up, um, then you have the protection of the powerful. They don't mind if, if a few uh, low-level rank-and-file paedophiles, um, low-level rank-and-file within the ring, I mean, uh, get uh, collared. They're not bothered about that because it doesn't uh, potentially um, lead to the rich and famous necessarily uh, because they'll be terrified of, of saying anything anyway. 
Um, but the the rich and the famous and the, the political names, they are invariably uh, protected. You look at um, the inquiry into mass child abuse in uh, Wales, in North Wales, and again, um, the uh, famous political figures, which uh, the uh, victims were naming, um, got away with it. So you look to America, anyone who, who is um, in any way um, uh, close to uh, Father George Bush uh, knows that he is a monumental paedophile. I've been naming him in my book since the 1990s again. Um, and, and, and we had the um, so-called Franklin cover-up um, in um, Nebraska when the um, rich and famous again were being exposed as being involved in a paedophile ring that went right into the heart of the Republican Party. What happened? Suppression, suppression, suppression. This is a constant theme and it has to be in terms of protecting uh, these people because so many are actually involved in it worldwide. And we had this extraordinary quote from a, a whip, a parliamentary whip of um, Edward Heath. Parliamentary whips, of course, for people who um, don't have them in their countries, um, basically are there to keep control of the members of parliament and make sure they vote in the way that the hierarchy wants. And this Heath parliamentary whip, Tim Fortescue, told a BBC documentary in 1995, the documentary was called Westminster Secret Service. He said that the whips could cover up scandals involving members of parliament, um, including those um, involving, quote, small boys, and then essentially blackmailing them so that they would always vote as the hierarchy wanted from then on. This is the quote. For anyone with any sense who was in trouble would come to the whips and tell them the truth and say, now I'm in a jam, can you help? It might be debt, it might be a scandal involving small boys, or any kind of scandal in which a member seemed likely to be mixed up in. They'd come and ask if we could help, and if we could, we did. And we would do everything we can because we would store up brownie points. And if, um, I mean, that sounds pretty, pretty uh, a nasty reason. Yes, it does. Uh, but it's one of the reasons because if we could get a chap out of trouble then, he will do as we ask forevermore. I've been highlighting over the last couple of decades um, how paedophilia, Satanism too, but paedophilia is used as a way of blackmailing politicians, including major, major names, to then do what the hidden hand wants. Otherwise, they're going to be exposed. And here is a, a whip in the Heath government openly admitting that they covered up paedophilia. Consequences for anybody? Nothing. Um, in Jersey, we've had the cover-up of the involvement of Ted Heath and his child supplier, Jimmy Savile. Um, a woman said she was abused by Savile uh, um, at um, a Jersey orphanage. In um, 1969, she said she reported it to a nun. Amazing how often nuns get involved in this. Uh, but had her mouth washed out with soap and was told never to speak to anyone about it. This is what is happening all the time. It's happening now in care homes as I'm speaking, in Britain, in America, in Europe, in Australia, and so on. 
Former Haute de la Garenne residents um, said they were abused by Saville. One said the television star um, sexually assaulted him between eight and 12 times in a camper van parked in uh, the Haute de la Garenne uh, grounds. And once again, common theme repeating it and repeated, we've had um, the um, Jersey report this week uh, talking about how the powerful were protected. And um, all these allegations against political figures that broke after the, um, the Savile scandal uh, broke. What has happened in, in terms of any major political figure that has been named over these intervening years? Nothing. And um, I was on a television program, BBC television program, with a guy called Michael Portillo, who was a former Conservative government minister. And he said during the interaction that allegations about the Westminster paedophile ring had been, um, had been shown to be not true. No, they haven't. They've been covered up. And I, I find it amazing that a former Conservative government minister and longtime member of Parliament like Portillo could possibly not know how rampant paedophilia is in Westminster. Not to know, he must have spent his entire time there uh, walking around with his eyes closed and his ears covered. The level of denial of the obvious is ridiculous. Another common uh, theme in all these paedophile rings and reports, stopping genuine police officers investigating if famous names are involved. We, we saw this in Belgium in um, 1996 when the genuine investigative uh, magistrate was um, fired from investigating the case of Mark Dutro and child murder and paedophilia, which went into the uh, upper levels of Belgian society and wider. And some spurious reason was concocted to get this guy off the case because he was starting to make the connections into the upper levels of Belgian society. So instead of saying, well, let's protect the children. No, no, let's protect the upper levels of Belgian society. And he was um, thrown out. Then you have um, all the uh, police officers, former police officers, who spoke out after the Jimmy Savile scandal broke, saying that when they were investigating paedophile rings, that was fine until they started uh, closing in on major political names. And suddenly they were off the case or the case was shut down. This is a constant theme. People say, well, why, why doesn't it come out more? Well, this is why. As the Jersey report said, children who said this is what's happening to me weren't listened to and were ignored. Probably many of them punished for it. And then you control the investigation. Which again brings us back to the Jersey report this week. In the Jersey case, um, a genuine chief investigating uh, officer uh, was thrown off the case because he was determined to get to the truth. That's the last thing this lot want. And then the chief of police in Jersey, Graham Powers, was suspended. He was overseeing the case and he was supporting the chief investigating officer. And the Jersey report said this week that a politician had lied to the Jersey Parliament to make the case for the suspension of Powers. Um, and the inquiry said that this fueled concern of a cover-up. Well, quite right, because it bloody was. 
<clears throat> Next one in the structure. Taking children from families on ludicrous and made-up excuses. Thousands and thousands and thousands of children are taken from their parents by social services and the state every year in England alone. And many of these children, increasing numbers, are taken from loving parents and for, again, spurious reasons, made up reasons, to get them away from their families and into the care system, or what calls itself the care system. This uh, process of making up reasons, going to secret courts which can't be reported, and then in secret getting a judgment to take the children from their families, often loving families in these cases, means that children can be identified by paedophile rings and targeted to order. And this is going on. Let no one kid themselves. They identify a child. We want that one. Members of the ring in social services then um, target the child with lies and made up excuses. They get the um, parents into a secret court, tell a pack of lies to the judge, even if the judge is genuine, and then they're taken from their parents and this identified child then ends up as a slave of the ring. This is what's going on. Or well, people are watching the sport and the game show and Simon Bloody Cow. And um, this Jersey report this week, here it is again. Uh, it said, children have at times been removed from families without a statutory basis or for seemingly inconsequential reasons, including simply being rude. People dismiss so much as not happening or not possible because it is so fantastic in comparison to their perception of normal, their perception of what's happening. The general normal perception of what's happening is a joke compared with what is happening. And un until we start to bridge that chasm between what people perceive is happening in the world and what is actually happening, then it will go on happening. A spokesman for the, um, the British uh, Child Protection Organization, the NSPCC, said, Appalling, uh, appallingly, children who spoke out about abuse, this is at Jersey, children's homes, were not listened to and those in authority failed to act as part of a culture of fear. Recommendations to improve Jersey's care systems were not just missed but were ignored. But of course they're going to be ignored because they have a structure in place that allows the um, ongoing um, abuse and widespread abuse of children. So why are they going to take recommendations that are going to uh, negatively, from their point of view, damage that structure? Um, it says uh, that um, children may still be at risk in the Jersey care system. Like I say, despite all that's been all that's been exposed, and on an island of one hundred thousand people, after all of that, children may still be at risk in the Jersey care system. Why? For the reasons I've just explained, and not just the Jersey care system either. The British one, the Irish one, the American one, the Canadian one, the Australian one, on and on and on, all over the world. And then we ask, OK, it's good that reports like this come out and uh, from time to time and, and highlight at least the basic theme 
of, of what is happening. But then, what is done as a result? Here's some figures to give you an idea. In 2010, uh, Jersey's chief minister issued a formal apology to all the victims after a police investigation reported 553 alleged offences between September 2007 and December 2010. In total, 315 were mentioned uh, involving Haute de la Garenne, uh, which was dubbed the House um, of Horrors. But out of all that lot, just eight, eight people were prosecuted for 145 offences with seven, seven convictions, despite 151 offenders and 192 victims being identified. This is another constant theme. It's like, it's like a fallback position. Your, your, your forward position is none of this is going on. Oh, it's, it's a load of rubbish. It's a conspiracy theory. Then the evidence builds and builds and builds and builds. And so now you have to take a fallback position. OK, yeah, well, there is some happening, yeah. But you want to hold that position at the small fry. So the big fish never get collared. And that is a constant recurring theme, and that's what's happened in Jersey. And uh, Graham uh, Powers, the, um, the Jersey police chief who was suspended for actually being too genuine, he said that the so-called Jersey way included never to do today what you can put off for 10 years. Well, this is not just the Jersey way, it's the British way in terms of paedophilia and Satanism, and it's the American way and the Canadian way and the Australian way and all their ways. Um, and he said that um, a disproportionate amount of power was concentrated in the hands in Jersey of a few ancestors um, who had uh, lived on the island for centuries and who were keen to resist Anglicisation. They were keen to resist losing control so that this stuff could come out. And that same position, that same structure of a tiny few dictating everything happens everywhere, um, as I've been exposing for so, so long. So we're looking at psychopaths um, controlling events. And of course, if you're talking about paedophilia, you're talking about psychopaths. You look at the traits, there's something called the hair test of psychopathic traits. You look at that list and um, it just describes paedophiles to a T. But there are other ways that humanity abuses its children. 1,200 child slaves rescued in a year. But shock figure for England is tip of the iceberg. Another story uh, this week. More than 1,200 children were rescued from sexual, domestic or labour slavery in England last year, reports uh, revealed today or a report revealed. They were identified by police charities and welfare experts as potential victims of so-called modern slavery, which includes human trafficking and forced labour. But the figure could merely be the tip of the iceberg with many more unreported cases, the study by the Children's Commissioner for England warns. Anne Longfield has urged politicians to stamp out the horrendous exploitation of youngsters by adults. Don't hold your breath. Uh, she said slavery was just one of several serious issues that forced millions of children across the country to live vulnerable or high-risk lives. Her report cites the latest figures from the government's national referral mechanism, the NRM, the official framework for identifying and helping victims of slavery and trafficking. Some 1,204 children aged up to 17 were referred to the um, NRM last year for suspected domestic servitude, labour or sexual exploitation in England, an increase of a third from um, 
2015. British nationals were the biggest group um, of these um, children, uh, followed by uh, uh, kids from Albania, from Vietnam, and from Nigeria. But the report says that there are many invisible children um, who may be particularly vulnerable due to gaps in identification. These youngsters have been victims of modern slavery, but not reported to the national uh, referral mechanism. Miss Longfield said, children or, or, or child slavery leaves deep scars on the lives of those children who suffer horrendous exploitation by adults. And this could only be the tip of the um, iceberg. Jacob uh, uh, Solbik from an organization, Anti-Slavery International, ch said child slavery affects thousands of British children and those trafficked from abroad. He said trafficked children go missing from the care system at an alarming rate. They call it a care system, don't they? But because these rings operate through the so-called care system, they are moving children out of that uh, system, that network, into their own network, which is why they go missing and end up as slaves and victims of paedophiles. They included um, a child, one of these kids, a child of 14 and a 15-year-old Albanian boy who was forced to work as a pickpocket in uh, Nottingham. And um, in 2014, infamously, a report commissioned by Rotherham Council, who'd ignored it up to that point, along with the police, revealed that at least 1,400 children in the town, some as young as 11, had been subjected to appalling sexual exploitation between 1997 and 2013. A spokesman for the British charity, the Human Trafficking Foundation, said... The data around child trafficking masks the scale of the problem, not only uh, because many children are hidden or too scared to come forward, but also because we are often failing to recognise child victims of modern slavery when they actually come forward. Lift the carpet, get a brush. And Robert Goodwill, Minister for Children and Families, said, we will look carefully at these exploratory statistics. Yeah, and you know what you do next? Bugger all. Gandhi uh, said that the greatness of a nation can be judged by the way it treats its animals. Well, we can also add by the way it treats its children. And in terms of that, greatness and even basic civilization the way the world including so-called moral superior western civilization the way children are treated and not protected is a disgrace a scar on the face of so-called human morality because if the way we child, uh, treat our children is a measure of success and greatness, then we are looking at a big, big fail, big, big time. And it's about time these things were addressed and not pushed away into the shadows and forgotten, as all this will be, if we allow it to.